Hi, this is Tim from Garden Hands. We, uh, we're going to start our soil blocking. There's a few things that we can start with, and it's the um, 12th of February, just before Valentine's Day, which reminds me, I still haven't gotten. Anyway, um, we're just going to go over a few of the things that we did and learned last year. We're going to change it a little bit, not a, not a lot. So we're going to get started on this. And if you're into starting seeds and you've got some good ideas that we can use or we've got some ideas that you can use, follow us along, subscribe, and give us a comment or two. We appreciate it. So we'll get started and just go over what we use. And we're not promoting any of this. It's just what we use. We use a Promix. This is super dry in here because we bought it last fall, so we'd have it. But it seems to be pretty consistent. It doesn't have a lot of uh, bigger chunks in it. Some of these that you get will have some bigger chunks to them, so you have to sift it out. And you can do that, but with, without the chunks in it, we don't have to mess around sifting it out. We use water. It's just a jug of water. We use a 2-inch soil blocker, and it has the dibbles insert it into the top to where this that's where the seeds will go in once this makes its shape and we have a large tray a mixing tray or a gardening tray we use that it kind of contains 80 percent of my mess 70 50 40 some of my mess um, we use that up on top, I've got some soil mats, or some wicking mats. These, these, this is a, two brand new ones that we didn't use last year. And this is one that we did use. We didn't clean it out a lot. I think that's okay to use. I don't know why it wouldn't be. It's still got its, um, it still feels like new. It's just a little bit dirty. I'll shake it out before we use it here and get rid of that old dirt. And these are our seed trays. These are a 1020. This is a lighter one that you buy any place. And this is one from Bootstrap Farmer. And we're going to weigh these just for fun to see because there's such a difference where these little ones are flimsy. You can kind of turn them right in half. These are rigid. And I'm putting more force into it right now than I did with this one. But these are rigid and these are going to last real well. These are great. And again, from Bootstrap Farmer, is where we had purchased these. Now, these are cheaper and these are more money, but I feel you get what you pay for. So first I'll mess around, I'll weigh these up quick and we don't have to do the whole thing, but we'll tell you what the difference is in weight in these two, these two trays, and then we'll get started mixing up our soil. 4.4, 4. and the one from Bootstrap Farmer weighs 12.4. 12 so eight ounces more. So they do weigh considerably more. They're, they're a very good tray. One of the other things that we didn't mention is generally we'll use hot water. And the reason of that is that it helps to sterilize the soil a little bit more, maybe get rid of some fungus that would have occurred when these bags are being moved or when they're in storage at their factory or at their warehouse. We don't always get the water like that to use it. Today I'm going to just use cold water just for demonstration purposes. When you get this in the uh, in this container and get your water into it, I guess the reason I don't measure it is because every year you get this it'll be different. This is super dry. You can almost see the dust in it. If it's drier some years than others you're gonna use more or less water so I don't always measure it. So we'll get these crumbled up pretty good and if you do run into a bigger piece which I haven't yet if you run into something we'll just put that off to the side and get rid of that Lindsay asked if this was made for soil blocking I don't know if I've ever seen one made specifically for that but this is uh, for starting plants indoors for starting vegetables and flowers indoors when we get done mixing this we would like to have this so that It'll hold some shape to it once you squeeze it, but we don't want it so wet that you can squeeze to have water just running out of it. You'll get some drips out of it, but not, not have it just ooze out of your hand with water dripping out. This is not science at all. Well, it is science maybe, but it, this is not complicated. You just keep mixing it until you get the right consistency. If it's too wet, you can get some more soil out of your bag 
and if it's too dry, you can add some more water. Kind of gives you that good feeling that spring is around the corner somewhat because you're getting some dirt mixed up and you're going to start planting some seeds. I think that's the kind of the, the beginning of spring a little bit. It's kind of fun to do that. So we've got, see there's a lot of water coming out of that, but yet when you compress it with your soil blocker, it will get rid of some of that water. And as we make some, there'll start to be a little bit of water that'll form to the side because you're pressing it, pushing some water out. So the soil blocker will kind of get rid of some water too, but you want it so that you can, so it'll hold somewhat of a shape when you have it in your fist and you let go. Otherwise that soil block won't work if it's too dry. We're getting to where we're getting a mess going here, so now we're happy. So here's our tray with the mat in it. So here's our seed blocker, and I've made a mound of potting soil here. So I'll push that down in and work it around a little bit. And then I'll move over just a couple inches over and get a fresh mound to keep working it into that one. And you can see the water coming up through onto the top of them. And here's real hard to see that, but I'll just smooth it off with my hand just a little bit and bring it over into our seed tray. So this year we're going to change how we do this, how we fill our trays just a little bit. We're going to leave just a small space, as small as we can, along the side in thinking that when we put water in here, instead of watering the top, we could fill this tray so it was just solid soil block, or we could leave a small space at the ends on each end and maybe one space in the middle too. So we can see and we can, you can put water in and not have to fill it, we think, as full because there's corrugations in the bottom, the water will follow that. We'll have maybe one less row of seed blocks, but our water will be able to move across this a lot easier. So we're gonna try that this year. Don't, it, it'll work. All we're gonna do is lose one row of seed blocks. So as you're gonna release this, you push down on your top T handle and pull up on this handle. And then let's go. So there's your first row of seed blocks. So these are a two by two, and there's the dibble inside there. I can put my finger in it, it's about that size. So the seed blocks are pretty durable. You can take them all apart, each one is sort of separate. So you can pick them up and move them around if you want to arrange them a little bit different. If you have a different number of seeds than what you got seed blocks or whatever works for you, like we end up, we end up that we need one up here, but we can put four rows of these across and then we'll put one more here and that'll fill this. So I'll keep making a couple more here. And granted, we're not doing the number that a nursery would do where they do thousands of these. So I can say this is easy and quick, but for a homeowner or home gardener, um, it is very handy. And I think a, a nursery, if I'm not mistaken, would probably use there's a size that's smaller than this, I think a three quarter inch or a one inch. They make a lot of different sizes. Um, now this one was kind of smushy on one side, so I need more dirt on this side. And you can just add it in the bottom if you want to do it too. There's a lot of different techniques to this. I wouldn't say anybody's is wrong or right. Their rigidity, their firmness, their density was just kind of shown right there that they these retain shape even though I had to fit that in there fairly snug. And when I removed, when I had it down and I removed the tool back out of it, it left every all the shape to them without destroying these here. If your soil wasn't the right content on moisture, that would show up there. If it was too dry, they'd start to crumble. If it was too wet, they'd probably stick or smear. Leave about a half inch space between these and still come over here and get another row and then have a space at the end. Mm -hmm. 
these will be enough soil that you could make these work to put them into the garden from here. So that saves you a step in transplanting if you put them into smaller soil blocks or a small tray. You'd have to pull them and transplant them. With this you don't have that transplant shock and I think that these transplant into soil in the garden real well. So that one worked very good even though it, this was really snug putting it in there and I made sure I cleaned that side. Another thing that people have said and you can see what this looks like is that you should dip these in a pan of water that's this deep that you can dip this in and then just get it cleaned off. We haven't had any issues and maybe it's the type of a potting mix that we're using. Maybe if you some people will make their own potting mix and that's coming in the future here. Once we get our compost going we're next this this coming summer it should be going good enough. If you made your own maybe it be, would be a little bit stickier and you would have to dip this but it doesn't seem to be an issue here at all. This force here shouldn't be any greater than what it is for what you're pulling up, I guess I would say. Otherwise it will make it more difficult for it to release. There's 44 soil blocks in this. We left a space for water here and here and here. So you can pretty easily see what you're doing when you're watering them. We could have left these this four out of this end too. So we did 40, 44 seed blocks in about five minutes. To make 100 seed blocks takes 10, 12 minutes. The one thing I do like is this table that we built. We had an old set of legs and we kind of just used a piece of countertop and screwed it down onto the legs. It's 40 inches long, it doesn't need to be. It isn't any too long. With it being only 27 inches tall, it seems short, but that is just the right height for me to push down on this. So this is the soil blocker that we just got done using. I rinsed it off. We bought this one last year thinking that we'd be able to soil block and start our seeds with this one and put them into this. This one has a dibble that these will fit into. We tried this, oh we tried this for a half a day we tried doing, doing this. Number one it takes a huge amount of soil but it's it's four inches so it's similar to a four inch pot so a four inch pot would take a lot of soil but we couldn't make these hold shape and we, we tried wetter soil and drier soil and the potting mix brands that we had we tried three different brands I think too we couldn't make this retain its shape enough to make it work once we once we had one that almost worked and we took a little soil block out of this or this one and the small one and put into it and then it fell apart so we never did use this one and for our application, it just didn't seem to work. It was easier just to get, you, everybody has tons of these plastic pots that you've had from the years that you saved them. It was easier to put this two inch one into a plastic pot and then from there transplant it if your plant was getting bigger. So that was just our little bit on this big one. If you want one, I know somebody that has one that would make you a deal. Um, so that's all for now on our soil blocking. Stay tuned with us. We're going to do another video on uh, planting the seeds. So thanks for watching and remember to subscribe. Thank you.